This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. How's your horse? Well, thanks to the swamps of sadness, uh, I found out he has crippling depression. Oh, wow. Yeah, but thankfully an apple filled with Prozac and literally drowning in his own despair cleared him right up. Well, that's gotta be better than your return to Oz, am I right, Dorothy? Well, after being chased by a woman with a decapitated head through a hallway with screaming faces, I think I'd prefer the shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is so crazy. I had no idea there were so many survivors of 80s kids' films. Thanks for inviting me to this, Malcolm. Well, you know, I had an invite. Yeah, I was gonna ask, what's that for? Ooh, one of those Koopas from Dark Crystal. Greetings, survivors of the bright and colorful time known as the 80s. <laughs> it is time to hand out our awards. The winner of smallest survivor in a scary as shit 80s kids film is... A tie between Mrs. Brisby and Fifo. Thank you all so much. I know Fifo would also love to accept this award, but he seems to have mysteriously disappeared for the night. I dedicate this award to Don Bluth's disturbing phobia of cats. I mean seriously, who names their feline dragon? Thank you. And now the winner of the most inanimate survivor, the brave little toaster. Thanks everybody. I just hope this brings awareness to the dangers of clown firemen, and also Peter Lorre sounding the lamps. How racially insensitive. And now, the honorary award for the only black person in any of these dark kids fantasy movies. The Ken from Never Ending Story. Here to accept this award in light of his passing, his grandson, Malcolm Ray. I didn't know you were related. Um, thank you all for being a bunch of racist crackers. And finally, the award for bravest survivor goes to... Whatever the name of that kid was from the witches. Last year this year. Thank you. It's uh, no secret that this film inflicted great psychological damage on my psyche. Whose film did it? <laughs> I know, right? But knowing that the damage done was inflicted tenfold on millions of children across the nation just warms my heart. Wait a minute! I deserve to win that award! Oh no. It's Taryn. Who? From the Black Cauldron, he's an honorary mention. Is this to be my life? Never winning this award? I'm a warrior! He thinks he's on the same level as us other 80s dark movies, but he's... he's special. I'm not a little boy anymore! I should be doing heroic deeds for Predain! <laughs> I guess Black Cauldron isn't the most liked movie, huh? <gasps> Did you dare say you didn't like Black Cauldron? Well, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, that, that, that's what you all were acting like. Well, nobody likes Black Cauldron, but that doesn't mean you don't like Black Cauldron. What the hell does that mean? It's complicated. <laughs> Developed in the 70s, Black Cauldron went through a lot of reworking until its premiere in 1985. Apparently it was passed from creative team to creative team, constantly ate up money being the most expensive animated film at the time, and was heavily edited down because Jeffrey Katzenberg freaked when he saw kids running out of pre-screenings due to how scary it was. 
wow, this film sounds kind of badass. It is. There you are, His Majesty the Horn King! <laughs> what do you want to expect? <laughs> when it came out, it was not very well received by critics or audiences. In fact, it lost to the Care Bears movie that had already been out for several months. I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. It was often referred to as the film that almost destroyed Disney. Over the years, though, it's grown a cult following, being praised by fans of dark 80s movies and cheering it for being the black sheep of Disney cinema. Yeah, people weren't right to understand it. It was too dark for their brainwashed Disney minds. Did you challenge me? <laughs> Run, you coward! Oh, 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 per day's finest warrior draws his last breath. This will take minutes to wash out. Yeah, a few things can be fixed. Wait, I don't get it. Is Black Cauldron like this lost dark masterpiece, or is it just an awkward, forgettable mess? It's complicated. I'll tell you what, why don't you watch it on my phone and decide for yourself while we... I'm a war! ...tend to Frodo Bastard here. Good luck. Well, let's see if it's worth the praise it's gotten or the hate it's gotten. This is Black Cauldron. The film opens solid enough with a description of what the Black Cauldron is. There was once a king so cruel and so evil that even the gods feared him. Man, everyone was freaked out by those BK ads then. A black cauldron was made to conceal the king's evil and whoever possessed it could raise an army of the dead. So obviously this evil king is the bad guy, right? Nope, never mentioned again. Kind of odd, they were building him up so much. If in Lord of the Rings, would it add up if they were like, The spirit of Sauron endured. Sauron has returned. But let's see what the white witch is up to. Die! <laughs> Eh, she's fine. We then cut to a cottage where a wizard maybe man named Dalbin looks after a boy named Taran. Wait, with an American accent, is it Taran or Taran? Now I'm just gonna call him Taran because his voice is tearing through my earlobes like a monolith of annoyance. Is this to be my life? Pampering a pig? I'm a warrior. Taran, I'm 100% convinced, is the lost Disney princess. Now I know that doesn't sound right, seeing how there's technically a Disney princess in this later, but she doesn't have as many Disney princess traits as he does. For example, he's very delicate and fey. But I'm not afraid. Ouch! He lives in a cottage, is unhappy with his life, has no mother, and yearns for more. Dorban doesn't understand. I'm not a little boy anymore. I should be doing heroic deeds for Prydane. Even his design is very Disney princess-esque. Look at him. If you just switch the hair, it's pretty damn close! You're ahead of your time, man! You're breaking down barriers! you don't even know you're breaking down. There is the minor issue though that the yearning part I was talking about is actually more whining. If you replace actually more with ear fistingly obsessive. I'm a warrior. Henwin, Henwin. It's always Henwin. I'm a warrior. Would I ever be anything but an assistant piggy? I'm a warrior. And I could be a famous warrior. I'm a warrior. All I need is a, is a chance. I'm a warrior. You better eat it. I'm a warrior. Look at me, Hen. I can do it. I'm a warrior. Do you challenge me? I'm a warrior. Run, you cowards. I'm a warrior. Henwin got dirty. He doesn't like you. I know the idea is to show he's cocky and not ready for the world he's about to enter, but there's a difference between Peter Parker cocky and Howard the Duck cocky. One has charm in how naive he is, and the other is Howard the Duck. Don't be like Howard the Duck. She's a special pig taran. He looks after a pig named Henwin, who they only keep around because a spider said she was cool. It was weird. When she suddenly sees something so terrible, she can't contain it. What's the matter? Calm down, Hen! So the pig has magical powers. When you put her face in water, she can predict the future. Cool, when my hamster puts his balls in Kool-Aid, he can watch Gilgan's Island. What the hell kind of power is that? I mean, come on, a map in the moonlight reveals hidden letters. Playing a flute over fire can summon magic imagery. Shoving a pig's face in a toilet can get you lottery numbers. It just doesn't seem particularly whimsical. <sighs> Fantasia? She's showing us better Disney films! It best leave out some of the racier centaur scenes. The Horned King. That's Henwin! He knows. Only I knew the secret of Henwin's power. But no, the Horned King has discovered it. We're not really sure how he discovered it! Oh, it must have been that drunken Instagram post. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not afraid of the Horned King. Then you are a very foolish lad. Really? That was the tipping point for you? Take Henwen to the hidden cottage at the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Goodbye, Dorban. I won't fail you. Uh, he's totally gonna fail me. So much. So soon.
But, Dorbin, why don't you come with me? Oh, well, well, well. Uh, the cat and the books and, uh, I still send out for physical Netflix DVDs. Yes, I'm the one. We then cut to the castle of the Horn King, beautifully accompanied by Elmer Bernstein's recycled Gozer theme. The Horn King is voiced by legendary actor John Hurt, who offers a pretty chilling read with the exception of when he's rushed here and there. Soon the Black Cauldron will be mine. Yes, oh yes, then you will worship me! It's like he was doing so good and then he found out he didn't put money in his parking meter. Soon the Black Cauldron will be mine. Yes, oh yes, and then you shall worship me. Oh, come on, I'm paying through the hour! Tarn is so aware of his important mission to keep Henwin safe that he stops right in the middle of it to fantasize about himself being a hero, thus losing her. The greatest warrior in all Pridane! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Oh no, my fantasies of sexy Big Bird are getting in the way of my fantasies of heroism! Her real knights don't have to stay focused, do they? But without the help of my pig Henwin here, I... Henwin? Oh no! That was really the best take you had? Oh no! I'm going to have my favorite cereal. Oh no! This isn't my favorite cereal. Oh well, I'll still pour it in a bowl. Oh no! We're out of bowls? Oh well, I'll still get the toy that's inside. Oh! But just when you think our leads couldn't get any more annoying. Ooh, great prince! Have poor starving Gurgi munchings and crunchies! This is Gurgi! Gurgi is if the shaggy dog's ass farted Jar Jar Binks' voice no matter how often you asked him to stop. Oh, poor miserable Gurgi deserves fierce smackings and whackings on his poor tender head. And yes, dear viewer, he's in a lot of the movie. Oh, poor Gurgi. I was left with no munchings and crunchies. Oh, big snap. Never sharp eyed Gurgi saw the piggy run. Now, Gurgi remembers. Yes, guess where the flowers has come. Gurgi will find the lost piggy. Hey, hey, hey. Good print. Good apple. Oh. Boy, what a juicy apple. Uh oh, Googie not in the way they are. Uh oh. Oh, I get it. Someone was like, I bet you can't trick Disney animators into drawing Wilford Brimley's armpit hair on a Pokemon doll of Mark Twain with the death rattle of Donald Duck. And some sadist bastard was like, Watch me! Hey, is he making fun of Gurgi? Yes, yes I am. I find him very annoying. How dare you! I want to show you that he's the best friend alive! No, 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 no. Come in here, Googie! Disneyland ride. <laughs> Henwin is found too late though as she's grabbed by the satanic cult of Figment and taken to the Horned King. And on such a lovely rotoscope day too. If Greg Nord go into evil castle, poor Gurgi will never see his friend again. No, never. If Gurgi say one more thing like Gollum's wife queefing, we're never gonna see Gurgi again either. Terran goes to the Horn King's castle with such good security he can climb right up the walls, and such good architecture that he goes through a door that leads to beams on the ceiling. My designer did the Winchester house. It was either to confuse the spirits or because he was drunk. <laughs> Whoa, Esmeralda's been taking some liberties with her branding. Shit, now I'm just thinking of a funnier version of Hellfire. I feel her, I see her, the sun caught in her raven hair. Don't shame me, it's my thing, I just love her roles. We always have to look amazed every time he comes in. Even though this is like the millionth room he's entered. Oh, he's going to the kitchen. Ah! He comes in to do the laundry. Ah! He enters the bathroom. Ah! It wouldn't be so bad if his explosive demon flatulence didn't follow him in every entrance. Seriously, it smells like Ganon's ass in here.
Welcome, your majesty. We then come across Shaved Gurgi, who's the Horn King's assistant named Creeper, who brings in the captured Henwin. They can't get her to show where the Black Cauldron is, but thankfully it's raining fops. I presume, my boy, you are the keeper of this oracular pig. <laughs> you know, there's some words that just can't be made creepy even with John Hurt's amazing voice. I'm convinced pig is one of them. I mean, come on, you're the owner of this animal, the owner of this creature, the owner of this... Pig. I just keep expecting to see him in Babe, like... That'll do, Pig, that'll do. Now die. Actually, I'm not too far off, as they threaten to chop her head off if he doesn't show them how to get the visions. And man, was this an awkward image when I paused it while reviewing. I'll make her tell you. That's better. He agrees to say the magic words that shows them the Black Cauldron's location. Knowledge that lies beyond my reach. Okay, that pig's tripping balls face is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. What if it's not all, folks? What if it's just the beginning, folks? But Terran trips, spilling the water onto the Horn King's face. <laughs> I'm melting, I'm melt- wait, why does this hurt me? No, oh, of course, when pigs tell the future in water, it instantly becomes toxic. Who wrote this? Come you know, I gotta say, Miss Peaky's origin story is a lot more aggressive than I thought it'd be. Gotcha! Throw the boy into the dungeon. Then throw the dungeon in the dungeon. Then throw the dungeon in the boy! So they locked Heron away, and he's all alone to think about his thoughts. <laughs> well, my escape failed. I'll try again tomorrow. But a girl sneaks into his cell and admits she's being held prisoner too. I'm Princess Alonwi. Princess what? I'm Princess Alonwi. Isn't anyone named Bob in this? Look, there's Heron Kerpapa. There's Gugglebegoo of Shabithithith. Behold, Obnoxity of Shut Up. Your names all sound like preservatives. So Princess Alonwi looks over the situation. Are you a lord or a warrior? I, I, I'm an assistant pig keeper. Oh, what a pity. Bitch, he's more of a princess than you'll ever be. Actually, there's some truth to that. There is absolutely no reason for her to be a princess. She never uses her authority, we never see her kingdom, there's no royal family members that enter the picture. It's completely pointless. I think she was just embarrassed to say what she really did for a living. I, I, I'm an assistant pig keeper. Well, I'm assistant shit cleanup princess. Yes, that's it, princess. Really? Of what kingdom? Shut your hose, Vil. Sounds Norwegian. Thank God the guards are on vacation as they sneak easily through the place and find the tomb of the king who used to own the castle. He must have been a great warrior. The shield is the second marker. He graduates from pig keeping to grave robbing as he steals the king's sword and then they notice a henchman bringing in a ton of dead bodies. Don't oh, stop you weakling! Put some muscle into it! We should help him! They also come across a minstrel who's being locked up for stealing designs from the Aristocats. You seem an intelligent sort of chap to me. Eh? <laughs> I assure you I had no idea who owned this castle. Boy, even by Disney dumb faces, that was a really dumb face. Maybe he just saw John Malkovich in Bird Box and couldn't believe he couldn't stop making the sucking on hummingbirds penis face. Of your dastardly deed! I'm Fluna Flam! His name is. Fluna Flam! What? Fluna Flam! What? Fluna Flam! Pickles, I'm calling him Pickles! So Terran, Pickles, and Princess Lolly band together to try and escape. But oh no, they come across a guard with an axe! Look out! He might use his hand! <laughs> but luckily, his sword is a singing sword! <laughs> Look here, it says, only the lamest shall wield me. Well, as long as I don't have to do any actual hero work. I'm gonna get ah! you out of here. Okay, seriously, did he just skip? They're very merrily getting away! They get to the castle entrance, but find they're locked in. So the princess hugs the door. Do something! I can demand that you save us only for so long! <laughs> You know the thought occurs to me we're really terrible at what we do. Yeah, yeah, I even put that on my resume. Our heroes escape as Creeper goes to tell the Horned King the bad news. 
You bring news of the pig. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's still funny. There's just some words that take you out of a threatening tone. You bring news of the cookies. You bring news of Walla Walla Washington. You bring news of the nummy muffin cuckoo putter. It can't be done. He sends out his dragons to find them while our heroes take a minute to recoup. They're almost finished, Luda. Hmm. It's not too good, but it'll hold for a while. Oh, just like my bowels. I wasn't afraid. Why, we were running for our lives. Well, I got us out of the castle, didn't I? Phew, I'd say it was the sword's magic. No need to point out how useless he is, Film. He does it quite naturally on his own. Ha! Huh. What does a girl know about swords anyway? Girl? Girl? That is our word! At least I don't keep talking about it. Princess, I love you. How dare you take oh, his side? Uh, uh, silly girl. I hugged but a I... door, which is more than the wood that you're offering. Thank you. F for getting me out of the dungeon. So just as fast as they blow up at each other, they patch things up, as we also see the return of... Thank you, Slappy Dave! <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Exactly, toddle off, toddle off. Huh. Go, go. Lock the door, or make a door so we can lock it! Saw Piggy's tracks! You did? He just might know. Pretty lady come too? Well, I... Yes, yes, yes! No! Not to worry, my little Ewok's ball sack is in the rest of the movie! Ah! <laughs> uh, incidentally, did you know that we had a musical number in this scene? My favorite! Okay! We blow, we blow, we salt the sack we go! La 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 we blow! Are you we sure blow. this is an underrated classic? It's complicated! We blow, we blow, <laughs> we salt the sack we go! La 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 la! It's so easy to steal someone's identity nowadays. Watch. Hi, Chaplin. You're Keaton now. Do you like being Keaton? Keaton? <laughs> Online, this is done all the time. That's why you need ExpressVPN. Without a VPN in general, your internet browsing data can be tracked by your ISP, as well as your cellular provider, ad companies, and hackers. When you use a VPN like ExpressVPN, your public IP address is masked, so even the websites you visit won't be able to identify you. It also encrypts your internet data, preventing others from sniffing your information over the network. But on top of that, you can also unblock content, accessing content that's only available in some countries. But ExpressVPN is the best because it has the fastest speeds, server locations in 94 countries, 24-7 customer support whenever you need it, apps for every device, Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, router, and so many more. And on top of that, it's easy to use. You connect with just one click. It's internet without restrictions. Securely stream or download content from anywhere, anytime. No activity or connection logs. Your data is your business. I guess that's why it's the market-leading VPN and rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar. And on top of protecting all your information, it's cheap as hell. Less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I use it because my data and identity matters a lot to me, as well as the identity of my cat. How's it going, Keaton? Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Nostalgia Critic for three months free with a one-year package. Visit ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic to find out more. Take back your privacy today, don't be like Keaton. Or is it Chaplin with two ends now? How do you like that? Chaplin with two ends. <laughs> Visit expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic to learn more. So our heroes fall down a whirlpool and come across these smurf snork glow bugs that raise the question you know everyone's asking. Director's kids cameo or producer's kids cameo? 
How did they get in here? We better tell King Ida Lake. You silly. Uh-oh, we're all going to be in trouble. Well, at least their performances are matched by their awkward as hell freeze frames. Seriously, you could start a photo playlist with these. Uh, uh he hello, uh, I'm King Idleg of the Fair Folk. As the chubby bearded guy in every fantasy, you'll fit right in, farm boy in every fantasy, princess in every fantasy, and comic relief in every fantasy. Disney, we welcome new dreams and ideas as long as they've been done before. Oh, hey. Thank goodness you... <laughs> We were about to sentence her to death for eating 12 of our people. It's only fitting you watch. Tell me, is the burning and killing still going on up there? Well, Katzenberg is still in charge, if that's what you mean. They tell them where they can find the Black Cauldron, and they plan to destroy it to stop the Horned King. They come across Mad Madam Mim's brothel and break in to see if they can find it. Oh, Master, come quickly! Doggy found the wicked cauldron! Quick, 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 follow Doggy! You know he's growing on me, like a cyst. To come across Winnie the Pooh's pot collection. <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm already ashamed of that one. Where the prototypes for Hocus Pocus appear and threaten to turn them into frogs. Where'd you go? You! Where are you? Don't go. Let's play how many fetishes were created with this scene. Do I hear five, five, five? Do I hear six, 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 six? Do I hear seven, 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 seven? The answer is... Enough. We've come for the Black Cauldron. Perhaps I might interest you in something else. Pockety pockety wockety whack! The sword once again does all the work, and the witches agree to trade the Black Cauldron for it. No, Taran. No! It's our only chance. Is it your own choice, Duckling? You could be the greatest of warriors. I offer my dearest possession. You've had that thing for a day. I mean, if I had a chance to trade the end of the world for a gun that never missed, it wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, I use it on him first, and then... The bargain is made, and the giant cauldron is revealed, destroying the house. What fun and little darkness. Does they know the black cauldron is indestructible? Oh, yeah, with this thing now. For some reason, when the black cauldron rises, we turn to Frankenberry's fart. Fantasies! I don't know. They tell them that the cauldron's evil can only be stopped if someone willingly sacrifices himself by jumping in. Cool. Put a piece of sugar in there and wait for a bug to fly in. Yeah, I thought that in two seconds, these dumbasses still spend the whole night trying to figure something out. I let you down. Without my sword, I'm nothing. You are somebody. You must believe in yourself. I believe in you. I believe you want to toss yourself in that cauldron. I'll totally dedicate something to you. But the villains find them and take them back to the castle, where the Horn King uses the cauldron to bring a bunch of skeletons back to life. My beloved warriors have come to life. All the dead of centuries past. Please put on your 3D glasses so you will not get a headache. What? No glasses? Just enjoy the headache. Go forth, my deathless warriors. Yo ho, yo ho, a custom built to ride for me. But Gurgi finds them and sets them free. I must stop the cauldron. Taran! I'm sorry, Ilonwi. Please, Taran, no, you can't! My mind is made up. This movie's a lost cause and I want out! But get this, Gurgi decides to sacrifice himself. Oh no, not Gurgi. Gurgi, no, no, no! Part. Yes, Gergi, we all shed a tear when you gave your life for us, didn't we, everybody? Didn't we, everybody? Didn't we, everybody? Oh, oh right. no, no. Yeah, I am. Oh, you see, Gergi, they all missed you. Now let's cry together. Would <laughs> <laughs> you put that away? Oh, is this not a champagne moment? <laughs> So the Horned King's army starts to fall. What is it, sire? They're, they're dying! It can't be. Have you checked our internet connection? It can be wonky sometimes. Taran almost gets sucked in as the Horned King spots him. And, no joke, the entire climax of this movie is just him holding on to the wall. Why is all the heroic action in this movie just clinging to architecture? Oh, and shoving. Clinging on to shit and shoving. The physical demands of fighting for bedsheets on a twin-size mattress. 
So through the bare minimum, our heroes save the day. But that still doesn't bring back Gurgi. Cry, I guess. He's got what I wanted, and he's still not satisfied. The witches come to take the cauldron back, which makes you wonder what they want with it, or the sword for that matter. You know, who are these people anyway? But Pickles decides to finally do something in this movie and bargain for it. Yes, madam. Those old ears heard right. I adore forceful men. Ew. The cauldron? For Gurgi. <gasps> I was hoping we could kill him again. Perhaps we'll call it this time. The witches agree, and oh boy, Gurgi's back. Clever little thing. <laughs> well, you may be back, Gurgi, but once I report that on social media, your gray ass is grass! Thus we end on the film's final gripping line. You did well, my boy. Yep. <laughs> well, that was memorable. You did well, my boy. In that you made Kaylee from Quest for Camelot look like friggin' Joan of Arc. And that was The Black Cauldron. Is it worth the praise or criticism that it's gotten over the years? It's complicated. The characters and story range from forgettably bland to frustratingly annoying, but at the same time it is an impressive film given the time it was released and the company who released it. This is the closest Disney will ever get to a Watership Down or a Wizards. That strange combo of both cheap looking and epic looking while hovering over a dark style most parents would be afraid to show their kids. But with that said, it isn't really that dark. There's darker themes and ideas in other Disney properties, these creatures we've seen in other Disney movies, and even some of the wilder, more imaginative stuff, some of them designed by a young Tim Burton, weren't used because they were seen as too weird. So it doesn't even really have enough of an odd factor to make it that unique. But it was edited down. 12 minutes were cut from this film, and you know that would have saved the movie. Would it, though? Anything's possible. Apparently there was a lot more gore and violence in the original cut that most likely would have resulted in an R rating. That does make the reputation for it more attractive as we can just blame the close-minded pansies who weren't ready to venture too far from their fairy tales. But here's the thing, you'd still have these guys as your main characters. Could the longer edit have added to their development? I suppose so. But it's kind of like saying there's an edit of Phantom Menace that made Jar Jar Binks work. Or an edit of Son of the Mass that makes Jamie Kennedy work. Sure, it's possible, but it's very unlikely, especially given their performance and characteristics. But even taking all that into account, I get why a lot of people like this movie. It is the most consistently dark looking of the Disney films. Almost every environment is gray and swampy. It has an old school retro feel that most people associate with dark 80s kids films. And while it still keeps some Disney tropes alive, it did attempt to take a few risks. And it is kind of cool that something this consistently gray and threatening is in Disney's hand-drawn library. Those elements, I think, make some people more forgiving of the standard characters and story, and good for them if it does. There's a lot to appreciate, from the animation, the backgrounds, the risks taken, and even the flawed production history. It's all interesting to look at. Whatever your thoughts, it's an interesting film to check out, particularly if you're a big fan of those dark 80s kids movies. Not because it always works, but because it's fascinating to see how and why it works in some areas and not in others. And then compare it to how similar films either succeeded or failed as well. It's a hot mess, but it's an interesting hot mess. And interesting always warrants a closer look. Whiny pain in the ass from Labyrinth. I'm Taryn, the whiny pain in the ass from the Black Cauldron. Do you constantly tell people about how awesome you are without ever actually doing anything? I do. Do you blame everyone else for your problems and expect to be liked? I do. This is either love or Facebook. Come, let us embark on a trip of your hell fantasy. Where the lessons learned are shaky at best. Is there any other kind? <laughs> 
I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and I guess there's always an obnoxious tool for another obnoxious tool. Even Gurgi? Except Gurgi. Oh. I'm a warrior! Hey, Doug Walker here, doing the charity shout-out. This week is the Grameen Foundation. Because poverty and hunger often go hand in hand, they innovate to solve the problems the poorest people in the world face. They use digital technology and partner networks to create solutions that bring financial, agricultural, and health services to several households. As part of these solutions, they help to build empowering ecosystems that support breakthroughs in health, income, equity, confidence, and capacity. Every breakthrough counts, and you can play a big part in many of them. With an A rating on Charity Watch, it's definitely worth clicking on the link and seeing what you can give or share to help out.